Hey everybody, this is Jason Height, and today I wanted to show you guys a um, couple things that I do in ZBrush. Um, so those of you who are ZBrush users out there, uh, I just wanted to show my interface. Um, this isn't actually my interface, this is uh, Thomas Whittlebox. I think I'm saying his last name right. Anyway, really awesome jewelry designer, sculptor, uh, who I've taken classes from, and in that class, he provides this interface, and I really like it for just everything that he's kind of built into it. <clears throat> there is a lot of clunkiness, kind of, no offense, Thomas, but um, yeah, he's got all these really great custom brushes that he's made, um, and I really like where some of these buttons are, like mirror. I use mirror a lot, merging, deleting, hidden, um, dividing, you know, all this stuff's kind of here, and then... This, I don't use all this stuff, but I like it, and I don't actually work in this material. I actually work in his material, which is his startup. It's like this blue. I really like the shading on this. Um, it looks more like clay to me. <clears throat> I never sculpt in the, uh, I don't ever sculpt in this stuff. It's just, it's too, ref too reflective, and I, I need something more matte. And this is the best I've worked with so far. I used to use the Madcap Red. This stuff, but I also find that really re reflective, and there's just something cool and fun about this. So, anyway, great material. Thank you, Thomas. And I wanted to show you guys really quickly how I I make. Um, I use a lot of this is all hand sculpted, but I also like to use um, <coughs> alphas, which are done with Projection Masters. So here in Photoshop, um, alphas are all made. There's you basically I make a black square in Photoshop. And then I make white variances. So this, this is how quickly I do it. Um, I already have the layers done, so you're just going to see just kind of my process, not exactly detail on how I make them. But these are simple shapes that I just put together. So this was just, the first one is a stroked sphere at maybe like 50% tolerance. Then this one is um, a smaller stroke at maybe half the tolerance or a third of the tolerance and then I just cut out and delete some of the areas. Here's another one and I just kind of repeat this process with strokes and and just using this um, <clears throat> this tool over here. Uh, these, I can't, which I can't remember the name, but anyway yeah it's the elliptical marquee tool. So I use that one to make a lot of shapes too. That's these little square shapes. Or the lines, yeah, this is, yep, that marquee tool. More lines, more lines, more lines, and then, and then that's a whole bunch. <clears throat> and then if you notice, I have gradients is here. Slightly, so I have black, white, <clears throat> and then a slightly, slightly darker white, and then a gray. So I like to give layering to my alphas, and that and the the way that the photo uh, the way that ZBrush reads your alphas is the uh, I have it set so where the white is on the top, and then as you go back down, black is flat, no no effect at all, and then the gray is sort of in between. So you can really do some awesome stuff with the alphas. It's probably in my opinion, and there's a lot of shit in ZBrush that's awesome, but this is one of my favorite uh, tools to fuck with. So anyway, let's uh, let's save this out. And I'm going to put ship detail ring too. I, as you can see, I've made tons of alphas. These are all my alphas here. <clears throat> and let's go here. And I have this broken out into multiple tools. So I'm just going to solo the one that I'm working on. That's this tool. And I want to put like that, that shape right here. Um, so I'm going to zoom in <clears throat> to kind of how I want it pr uh, placed. So that's pretty good. I like to put it in the middle here. And then in my decimation mast, oh not decimation, no, projection master. So this is this is the selection I make for my projection. I turn off colors, not double sided. You gotta have fade on and uh, deformation. If you have normalized, it won't look right. Um, so I use this, this is my cut, my settings for this. I drop it and then you can already see here, I've already got this selected. But I changed the stroke. Originally, I sculpt with this, but when I do um, alphas, I use the drag, drag direct. And then this is an older alpha that I did that I didn't like, so I'm actually replacing it. So I'm going to import. <coughs> That's my tool. So I have a folder just for alphas. 
and it brings their most recent one. So that's the alpha I want to use. And here I set my tolerance. I have Z add because I want it to be on the surface. And then over here I've got the intensity. Now generally I work between 1 to 4, but for this I want it really punchy, so I'm trying 11. And I just click, hold, and pull, and drag it out, and you have this really cool shape. And then it's, it's a little off the center of where I want it to be, so I hit W, and then I use this little thing here, and I can drag it where I, wherever I want. But this is about where I want it, kind of in between both of these surfaces. And then I go to Projection, and I just pick it up, and then boom, there it is. There it is! So it's a little harsh. Let's actually see it in context with everything else. Maybe that's a little more harsh than I need it to be. No, I think that's, yeah, I try to look at it from all sides. And I do want it to kind of stick out, but mm, no, I don't, and it looks deformed. I don't know. So maybe it's too big. Yeah, let's try it again. So let me frame this out. Hold I hold option. To, to move the piece and then and then I hold option again and let go of option while still holding the mouse to zoom in. It's freaking awesome. It's a really awesome way. I had to learn that because he doesn't have the, the pick the grabbers here so I had to learn the shortcut and it's way faster. Okay so that's about so wherever you position your piece is where it's going to drop so I'm trying to get it as flat as possible. Let's drop now and then let's go the intensity at like seven let's try that click hold and drag and I'm not gonna make it so honking big I think that was just too big and let's see how that looks Oop. that looks better to me it's not as it's, it's not as honking it kind of measures with the rest of the detail and I'm gonna draw a detail that comes up to this so that it, it's not just an island but you know that's the general shape um, I did most of this all on symmetry, but now um, to finish the sculpture, I need to go in and <clears throat> start to do some non-symmetrical stuff because it, if it's too symmetry, it just it's too much, and I like to put in a little bit of asymmetry as well. It adds some dynamic um, looks to it, so you can see kind of all the um, all the different models here. Let me see if I can break it up here. I'll shrink it really small and then I'll expose it. So that breaks up all my models. You can see all the pieces, parts that this is made of. So one, two. Oh, now I have some hidden ones and I'm not, oh no, those are on the, I can't even tell. Yeah, those are, I am using it. I, I tend to work with a lot of pieces and I just jam them all together and then I end up with millions of parts and then I've gotten to the point on this where I've, I've deleted probably 50 parts so it's not a straightforward process for me. It's a little more, in, I gotta find the shapes, but um, eventually it worked. This um, center piece here, I'm gonna, uh, shoot, I don't know why, oh yeah, I go to my sub tool here. So I'm gonna hide this, turn it off. I just wanna show you guys what it looks like without the face, and then I'll select this piece. Oh, she's got her eyeballs in there still. Those are kind of freaky. So I've got two eyeballs in there. All right. So originally it was a little more like this, and I didn't have a face in there. It was just going to be like a spaceship because I'm super into weird <coughs> uh, biomechanical Giger-esque shit. And I like the... Um, I really love the derelict ship from the first Alien, and I... And I I love the design that they did, the updated design that they did in Prometheus. It's a more U-shaped, because they needed it to roll on screen. And nobody's ever done a, a version of that particular ship. It's like 100,000 times more detailed than the one that Giger did in 1979. Um, so anyway, this is sort of, this is sort of my, my, my own version of that, or inspired by that. I've got some skulls in there. And, and then, um, while I was working on it, I started messing around with the face. Um, and then that's where, you know, I ended up doing this. And I just really like that look. It's like, it's like she's got hair. I don't know. It just kind of pulls it together for me. Oh, yeah, and I got these freaky eyes in there. So anyway, that's all I'm going to talk about today. So I hope you got some use out of my video. 
Thanks a lot. I hope it recorded.